the iPad Pro or the MacBook Air? Which is right for you? Both offer the very powerful M1 chip, but depending on your needs, there is still quite a difference in the features offered between the two. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison and take a look. Both devices look great, featuring a premium aluminium finish and slim profile design, meaning both are very portable and feel good to use and hold in your hands. The MacBook is much easier to open though, largely due to the fact that the Magic Keyboard magnetises to the iPad, so it's actually a bit of a faff and definitely not possible with one hand. The MacBook Air features two Thunderbolt ports, whereas the iPad only has one. Do note though, that with the Magic Keyboard attached, you can still charge via the case and use the remaining port on the iPad. Regardless, for connectivity, the MacBook clearly takes the win here. The screen on the iPad is far superior to the MacBook, and I just love it. The Liquid Retina XDR screen, or Mini LED, looks fantastic, with over 2,500 local dimming zones, 1 million to 1 contrast ratio, as well as HDR support, resulting in very inky colours not too dissimilar to OLED. Equally, the iPad boasts up to 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content, and 1000 for max screen brightness. Compared to the MacBook, that's four times as many nits. So during the day or in lighter settings, the iPad shines through. It's an absolute pleasure to view and consume content on this screen. Anything from browsing the web to watching HDR video and photos. The contrast on the MacBook is still decent and I'm pleased with the display, but alongside the iPad, there's no comparison. The resolution on the iPad is also slightly higher at 2732 by 2048 with 264 pixels per inch versus 2560 versus 1600 with 227 pixels per inch on the MacBook. I can't say I noticed much if any difference here between the two in terms of sharpness though. So clearly the iPad is the winner here, but note that I have used the MacBook for color correction for my YouTube videos using Final Cut Pro and I found it to be very accurate. And also, even in lighter settings, I haven't had any real concerns with visibility on the MacBook for the most part. In essence, the MacBook screen is still great, but the iPad has really taken everything to another level. I really like the keyboard on the MacBook Air. Given its so low profile, it still manages to add a subtle feeling of depth for each key press. Keys are spaced out nicely and they are responsive, meaning mistyping is a rare problem. It's also quite quiet and the backlight doesn't bleed any light around the key edges, which looks slick. The trackpad is very generously sized, perfect for the many gesture-based controls offered on MacOS, and equally allows for more control when editing content and navigating. We also have plenty of space to place your palms and feel relaxed. On the iPad, the keys feel a little more clicky, and because the keyboard itself is plastic, this also means that each key press is noticeably louder compared to the MacBook. The Magic Keyboard is also missing the extra top row, which has all of the convenient buttons like screen brightness, multitasking, play and pause, etc. The trackpad is much smaller and is actually annoying when using it for editing content. So less space for your palms, meaning you may have to scrunch up your hands and fingers a bit to reach certain keys. Still, the Magic Keyboard is perfectly comfortable for extended use, but overall, the MacBook is the obvious winner. Pricing is extremely odd when comparing these devices side by side. Both start at £999, but the specs do differ. The base MacBook Air has a 7-core GPU, whereas the iPad offers 8-core for all models. However, the base model MacBook has 256GB SSD versus 128GB in the iPad. Personally, the extra SSD capacity is far more valuable to me, especially as a video producer. From what I gather, the extra core of GPU does not always offer a large enough performance boost for a lot of apps out there, so not such a concern for me. The key difference then is that the iPad doesn't include the Magic Keyboard, so with that, the iPad is actually £329 more expensive for kind of lower specs. For reference, adding the extra 120GB on the iPad is an extra £99. I'm not going into the ins and outs of every spec, but basically with the iPad, you're paying a premium for lower specs. So in terms of value for money, the MacBook wins. Bearing in mind my MacBook has 16 gigabytes of RAM versus eight gigabytes on the iPad, the MacBook versus the iPad should offer similar performance for the most part. Well, if I do some video editing, they both offer smooth performance for 4K content. 
Multitasking is also great, even on the iPad remembering it has only 8GB of RAM. If I load up apps, they both launch extremely quickly, and when we look at my MacBook, I've used this extensively for 4K video editing for around 6 months now, and it works like a charm. With the iPad, I recently tested it with Mac settings on a few games like Call of Duty and Oceanhorn 2, and again, they perform beautifully. Both devices handle what you throw at them very well, and we all know by now how well that M1 chip performs, so I'm not at all surprised. The fact is, the MacBook offers full-blown apps on MacOS, so you have no limitations and are free to utilise apps in all their glory. iPadOS is still essentially offering souped-up mobile apps, which have improved a lot over the years, but are still noticeably limited when compared to their full MacOS equivalents. Video editing apps are just one example of this. Third-party accessories have better support on the MacBook, and of course the MacBook has two ports rather than the one on the iPad Pro. Two is already very limited, so one will definitely prove to be more of a pain. I couldn't even get my Rode NT-USB microphone to work on the iPad, and this is meant to be compatible. So while the iPad has so much potential, it is bottlenecked massively by iPad OS. Of course, the iPad features a touchscreen, and for graphic design combined with the pen, for many, this device would actually be their preferred choice. For example, editing photos in Lightroom, or simply taking notes. I think for many though, this would not be a priority, and overall the MacBook just wins purely because of the operating system and the software available. Which is a real shame, because I know the iPad has so much more potential. The MacBook Air only features one front-facing camera, and to be honest, it's not that great. Still rocking 720p. It just looks quite grainy for the most part. It's fine with decent lighting and has improved a lot in terms of enhancing the brightness in low light settings, but you will witness a lot of noise. The iPad Pro is more on par with the iPhone, with a 12 megapixel and 2.4 aperture lens, meaning video calls look decent. Portrait mode is now available for the front-facing camera and offers nice results. It also features a wide-view angle for photos, which is really cool, and at the same time, centre stage is now present for video calls, which I found myself really enjoying, keeping you in focus when you're moving around on screen. It's just annoying the camera is still in the wrong place, meaning that when you've got this docked with the magic keyboard, it does look like you're facing away from the person that you're speaking to. The iPad also has a decent rear-facing camera, meaning if you like to take photos on your larger device, this is the clear winner, because you simply can't on the MacBook. The rear camera has higher specs of 12 megapixels with a 1.8 aperture, very similar to a lot of the cameras out there. And for those of you who use it, a LiDAR scanner is also available for AR features. So yes, the iPad cameras are the clear winner here. When it comes to the speakers, for me, this is actually a very close call, and I'd say they're probably on par because I can't notice much difference between the two. Both offer decent studio sound, separating sounds from left to right when you're watching video, and music playback is surprisingly good for such slim devices. Naturally, bass can be a bit lacking at times, but otherwise I'd say it sounds good enough to immerse you in whatever you're listening to. So quite simply, let's call this a tie. The iPad Pro offers up to 10 hours of surfing the web on Wi-Fi or watching video. The MacBook Air offers up to 18 hours of Apple TV app movie playback and up to 15 hours of wireless web. So that's a very noticeable difference on paper. In my personal experience with the MacBook, I never worry about it, even for video calls and extended video editing. With the iPad, I find I'm more conscious, although it's still good enough to host video calls and play games and stuff for a good few hours without any concern. Here, the MacBook Air wins. So, what do I recommend? For more pro tasks such as video editing, I'd recommend the MacBook Air. Quite ironic, really, that the Air has now become perfectly acceptable for very pro tasks. It also shouts out just how restricted the iPad with that Pro label is with the current state of iPad OS. For more graphic design apps, perhaps the iPad Pro, if you want to make use of a touchscreen combined with the Apple Pen, just bear in mind that a lot of other features will be more limited when compared to MacOS. Also, if we forget the Pro label for a second, for watching videos and consuming content, the beautiful Liquid Retina XDR screen is an absolute joy to behold. It's for this reason I pick up my iPad whenever I'm browsing the web or reading and viewing different types of multimedia. If you ask me what I'd choose overall though, without a doubt, it's the MacBook. 
Maybe iPadOS 16 will offer more next year. iPadOS 15 still hasn't really added enough in my opinion to make it worthwhile over the MacBook Air. Anyway, that's my take on the iPad Pro and the MacBook Air. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.